An exasperated father asked his son's high school principal what career his son should consider in the future. Now, his son was described by many of his teachers as lazy, distracted, and that he couldn't remember anything. <laughs> so the principal replied to the father, and he said, it doesn't matter what he does, he will never amount to anything. <laughs> that father's name was Herman, and that student who wouldn't amount to anything, that was his son, Albert. <laughs> Einstein. Now, before you and I start thinking poorly of that principle from 1895, we have to admit something. We've all been that principle. We unintentionally overlook a kid's raw and unrefined talent because that very talent tends to first bubble to the surface as an annoyance. And as a dad, I'm guilty of this myself 100%. My son will be like, hey, dad, do you want to play Legos? And I'm like, yeah, just a minute. And then he goes and sets a 60-second timer <laughs> and, like, stands there staring at me the entire time. I'm glad you find his persistence amusing. I find it annoying. But here's my question. What if a kid's most annoying trait is actually their biggest talent in disguise. Meaning, what if a kid's greatest asset first presents itself as a giant pain in your <clears throat> asset? <laughs> and if that is true, how do we not make the same mistake as Einstein's principle and unintentionally overlook genius simply because it first says hello as an annoyance? Well, over the last 40 years, the Gallup Research Organization has conducted more than 2 million interviews with successful people. And an interesting commonality emerged amongst these interviews. They found that successful people identify and refine their talents so that their talents become their strengths. Now, good for those people, but the question is, then how does a kid move from annoying trait to talent to strength to success? Well, I'm going to argue it's because that kid has at least one caring adult in their life who does the following, who redirects the annoyance and cultivates the talent. Lonnie's mother was excellent at this. Lonnie was meddlesome and mischievous, always getting into things. As a kid, he almost burned down his family's home because he attempted to cook rocket fuel on the stove. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> Lonnie's mother, bless her, she didn't lose her cool, as you might think. She had the patience or the wherewithal or the blood alcohol level <laughs> to see past this. Notice that her son had a scientific curiosity. She redirected him, said, hey, that's good, let's get you a hot plate. Why don't you take this outside somewhere more safe? Lonnie Johnson holds more than 80 patents and is the inventor of the national treasure, the super soaker. <laughs> Which is, amazingly, approaching $1 billion in sales. And with Lonnie's cut of those proceeds, he founded his own research firm, which works on inventions related to clean energy. Now, Nancy had a teacher who did this for her. Nancy, as a kid, was described as loud, opinionated, overzealous. She once hijacked the microphone at a school assembly in order to advertise this new student club that she was starting a student club which sought to convince world leaders to participate in nuclear disarmament. Not surprisingly, no random high school kid showed up to that club. <laughs> but a teacher took notice of this, that Nancy was a leader, albeit a bit overzealous, taught Nancy, hey, here's how you get people on board with your ideas, how you, rec how you recruit people towards your ideas. Nancy Lublin went on to recruit thousands of volunteers for the crisis text line, 
which provides 24-7 crisis intervention for young people who are deeply distressed and even suicidal. They've processed more than 28 million text messages and saved countless lives. And then there's Mrs. Wilhite. She had this kid in her class. <laughs> Loud, constantly disrupting, constantly talking, making everything a joke, the class clown kid. One day, Mrs. Wilhite pulls him aside, says, hey, you should sign up for speech and debate. Because I don't know if you ever thought about this, but..." I think you could be a gifted communicator. And I will never forget when Mrs. Wilhite said those words to me. <laughs> and you are listening to me speak today because she did. She didn't get annoyed by me, though she had every right to be. I was incredibly immature and sophomoric as a kid in her Spanish class. I would do annoying things, like I would ask her, hey, Mrs. Wilhite, how do you say the phrase, I would earn, in Spanish? Knowing full well this would force her to say aloud, yo gonorrhea. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Yet, despite my finely tuned immaturity, she looked past it. She redirected the annoyance and she cultivated the talent. You see, every kid needs one caring adult, like Mrs. Wilhite, in their life. An adult to be patient where others might be pestered. So when that kid in your life inevitably annoys you, let's be honest, likely in the next 24 hours, <laughs> because they're constantly getting into stuff, or they're argumentative, or they're annoying, Take a deep breath <laughs> and consider in that moment that you too might just have your very own genius sitting right in front of you. Thank you very much.